Welcome once again to Speakeasy. I am still Paul F. Tompkins. Today, my guest is an actor, a very special person. Please say hello to Max Greenfield. Max, thank you for being here. Cheers. I am very happy to be here. Salud to you. Mm. Little ginger beer. Yes. Let me ask you this. You're on The New Girl. You play Schmidt. I do. But when this was coming on the air, big advertising campaign, billboards everywhere with the word adorkable. Sure. Now, and then there was a backlash against the word. Oh, I'm sorry. I mean, everyone loved it. Did this term, because it's a made up silly word, did this haunt you at all? I was so happy to be on a, on a television show. Adorkable seemed like, hey, all right, at least they're calling it something. And you know, I'm, I'm on the call sheet with a place to go to, to, to work every day. Didn't affect me at all. Three hots in a cot. <laughs> I think that's about prison. <laughs> <laughs> On the set, frequently your character is shirtless. This is the thing that's maybe uncomfortable sometimes for an actor. Was this uncomfortable for you? Yeah, mm. uh, but then you get used to it, and then you try to prepare for it sometimes. Like, I would constantly ask, you know, I'd like to see next week's script. Mm. And I think, to some degree, in the beginning, the producers thought, oh, he's one of those type of actors. He wants to see where his character arc is going. Right. I said, oh, no, no. I would like to see if I'm taking my shirt off, and or, or, you know, with this show, like, how naked am I getting? Because um, it's gone beyond just mere shirtlessness. I've shown everything on this show. So the first couple times, yeah, it's really nerve-wracking, and then all of a sudden you find a liberation in it, and then you become kind of an exhibitionist with it. You're getting back to the garden. Right? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. And then someone goes, hey man, put some clothes on. <laughs> Are there times where you've just literally forgotten that you were not wearing clothes? It's more like I'm leaving my trailer and walking to set. Hey, you should put this robe on. Well, I need a robe for right. I'm just going to, you know what I mean? Right. And then all of a sudden people are looking at you like, what is going on? And then you forget that the robe is not a, not for you necessarily, right. but to shield you from other people, other people who because they don't necessarily want to see, you know, things that they don't want to see <laughs> as I'm walking across the fox lot with a sock on. And you like to throw out a lot of jokes. Have you ever done stand up? I did stand up once. Once. It was horrifying. I was very bad at it. I was taking an acting class at the time and many of the other students were, were stand-up comedians. Goofingly, I, I said to them, listen, I, why don't I come to stand-up once? I, I think it'd be fun. Now, let me tell you something, to be totally honest. In the back of my head, I thought, what if I kill? <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Yeah, and why not think that? So I went to the open mic, mic night <laughs> at, uh, at the comedy store, which they ran. They specifically put Mac Lindsay in front of me. Mac does about a good uh, minute and a half, three minutes on rape, and then screams, about Jesus as loud as he can into uh, the mic, and then to, ends. To a degree where you think maybe Jesus would not have been on board with it. No, not at all. But right off of that, and now welcome to the stage, Max Greenfield. And no buffer in between. No, no buffer. he's not doing any time to like, okay, so we all I saw thought, that So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do like a, like a Lewis Black storytelling kind of thing. Sure. It'd be fun to do it on khaki pants. Absolutely. Oh, that didn't go well. It didn't go well. <laughs> no. <laughs> It was so bad. Can you? It was really bad. Can you recall any of that khaki pants? I remember. I can recall not a punchline in 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 any of the material. It was stunningly bad. How long were you up there? Would you say? I would say I was up there for a, about five minutes. Wow. And it was just longest awful. five minutes of your life. I tried to. Yeah, it was bad. Yeah. It yeah. makes me. I mean, you guys. We're the real heroes. <laughs> it is true. <laughs> it is true. You've always been a comedy fan. Yeah. When you were a kid, your bar mitzvah. This is true. Had a Saturday Night Live theme. We were heavily obsessed at the time. So when I went to my parents. Well, it's like you and your pals were yeah. all on board with this. Well, this I is shouldn't say. Be the greatest. It was maybe me and two other guys, and then no one else really That's got all you it. Need. Come on. I don't think they really understood the concept of, of bar, bar mitzvah. Oh, they were not of the same faith. Jewish? No. <laughs> Have you ever been to a bar mitzvah? I've never been to a bar mitzvah. I grew that's, up Catholic. That's you know a shame. what? It is a shame. Because they were a good time. There's a lot of stuff that you like. You don't really understand, and then the beginning is like just a bunch of. Because the first, the ceremony happens at temple, right? And yeah. you have to say the I forget what it's called. The haftorah portion. Kind of nerve wracking, right? From what I understand. Very nerve wracking. You have to sing. You know, you you give it a bit of a tune, but not. I wouldn't go full sing on it. Here's the thing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give this away. I'm gonna give this away oh, here okay. on this show. Does not leave this, this in. Is, this, is what, this is what they call an exclusive. Oh, some places. Scoop. My half tour portion. Uh -huh. I didn't know what I was saying. Phonetically. Yeah, kind of a, a little bit because I was very nervous. Mm -hmm. Just give me, give me the, give me the notes. And that way, I went out there, crushed. Right. 
Is this my dad that? was like, listen, listen to my boy. Little did he know, I had no, I had no clue what I was saying. I understand you brought a clip of what happened. Of earlier. what happened earlier? Yeah. Let me just very. Um, Does it need set up? You want me to set up the clip? Oh, please, if you, if you want. So I sit in, and I feel, I feel myself getting. Getting a little hot under here. And then you have that moment where it's like, I don't know if this is the nerves or am I, am I, am I sweating because of the lights and it's just hot in here. Yeah. And then it got ridiculous. All right, let's take a look. This yeah. is uh, Max Greenfield sweating under layers. I forgot to tell you, it's boiling hot in here. It is a little hot. <laughs> it has gotten not steadily lie, hotter. I feel like I made a mistake. I had seen some of the, your shows sure. on, uh, on the internet. Yes, that's where and they live. you've got a beautiful look going on. Thank and you. I, you do, you really Thank do. You. So Thank I thought me. what would be better than this whole you got a nice blazer. You got a nice sweat for this. Yes, yeah. exactly. Do you want to shed a layer? But then I got the mic and uh, stuff. Ah, that's true. In here. Well, you gotta live with it. Max Greenfield, what can I say about Mazel Tov? <laughs> Thank you for being here. Cheers. That's it for Speakeasy this time. Uh, we will see you again. Thanks so much. Gotta get the. You want to do it without the straw? I want to do it without the straw. Well, you've got the napkin stuck. I in know. The glass. Like I'm in space. So at this point. These straws are making me look uncool. <laughs> <laughs>